Hey, the Butcher Clifford here for WXC as we get ready for Friday, October 21st, 2016 in Ypsilanti, Michigan at the Eastern Michigan University Convocation Center for WXC 65. We have Ypsilanti's own Dominique Carter, one and know as a professional in the featherweight division. Welcome to WXC again. Thank you. And I'd like to start out with uh, a little bit of talk about your amateur career. Nine and two is how you finished as an amateur as the WXC featherweight champion. And interestingly enough, your first ever WXC contest a couple of years ago, on two weeks notice, was against now teammate Taylor Moore. Um, why don't you tell us about that experience for you? Um, that was a big opportunity, obviously, fighting for the championship in WXC. Uh, I just had to take the chance. It's Taylor Moore. I knew about him. Uh, thought I could outstrike him. Knew his ground game would be a little bit better than mine, you know, and coming from SFS with their ground game. Uh, but it was a good fight. Ended in the second round, I think. Uh, he triangled me. Um, after that, we became good friends, and now we train together, push each other all the time in practice. Uh, he's actually one of my main training partners. And that's one of the benefits of an amateur career. One of the reasons why we here at WXC try to nurture amateur careers is for reasons like that. Quite often, training partners have met each other through combat in the cage, and right. they end up pushing each other to the next level together. Right. And it's good to see that as well. Now, when we talk about Scorpion fighting systems, we got to talk about in-state rivalries because you guys are one of the few teams that has embraced that and, and actually has the numbers to field opponents for a couple of the other squads that have maybe been here a little bit longer or have had people who have been doing this a little bit longer. Now, you got the numbers, and you guys are taking victories here back and forth. Uh, Michigan top team is one uh, squad that we see a lot of matchups uh, because of the fact, not because there's necessarily trying to be a rivalry nurture or anybody dislikes anyone, but those two squads are well attended, well represented in every weight class, and the fans want to see it. Right. Now, Fuse MMA might as well be in a lot of ways a sister school to Michigan top team as far as the history of Michigan MMA goes. Do you feel any rivalry there? Um, not really. I just see this as another fight. Uh, he wants to take his pro debut against me. That's fine. I mean, it's been this way before, so we can do it again. Well, now your opponent, George Simos, again, as we mentioned, from Fuse MMA, he did have a few choice words to say at the end of his interview, and he, told, he did say, watch your legs. Now, uh, Maybe does that change your mind a little bit about how you feel about your opponent? In you? so my, uh, I'm, I'm suggest. I think he's talking about uh, leg locks or something. Probably, uh, I don't think he's gonna kick my legs. Uh, that's my game. Uh, but if he's one talks about jujitsu, I mean, I got two of the best jujitsu practitioners in the state, Christian Wood Mancy and James Gray. So, I mean, they'll be right there talking me through anything he wants to try to put me in. One thing that's really cool about that, that, that it does lie at the heart of these types of rivalries when we talk about the different schools is all these, all three of the schools we've mentioned so far, Fuse, Top Team, and of course, Scorpion Fighting Systems have a strong base in jujitsu. And so what if, and you come in as a, a very strong presence on your feet. You always seem to, to start pretty well. Um, when you look at your opponent, is there anything that you see that might affect any game plan as you get closer to the fight? Um, no, I really don't have a game plan. I mean, I'm just going to act like going out there and sparring one of my teammates ever. I'm going to hit him as hard as I can. And if he wants to try to go to the ground, I'm trying to keep it standing. So I'm going to try to knock him out. I'm not trying to finish by submission. But if that's how it happens, that's how it happens. And how, how much did it uh, help you gain confidence as a professional with a victory out of state against a veteran competitor? Um, it made my confidence a lot higher because uh, finished by submission. So it was like my third submission in a row. So um, I'm, uh, my jiu-jitsu is looking great. I uh, just got my purple belt as well. So Congratulations. Thank you. It's a, I believe your opponent's a blue belt. 
almost ready for purple as we were talking to him earlier. So that's going to be a heck of a matchup. Now, um, as we get closer to October 21st, obviously this fight in your hometown, and I'm sure that you've got a lot of people that will be in attendance. Oh, yeah. Anybody that uh, is on the fence that may be watching this or anybody that will be in attendance at the EMU Convocation Center, what kind of a message do you have for the fans, and why should they pay particular attention to this contest? Because um, this is this is our city. This is where I where I grew up. Everybody knows me here. Um, it's gonna be, I'm guessing, hundreds of people there for me, uh, trying to sell lunch tickets. Um, just ready for this fight. Ready to, for it to happen. And then the final question would be. What is a message for George Simos before you guys get in and let him lock the door? Uh, you better work on your takedowns because we're not going to the ground unless I say so. Dave the Butcher Clifford here for WXC as we get ready for Friday, October 21st, 2016 in Ypsilanti, Michigan, at the Eastern Michigan University Convocation Center for WXC 65. Finally hanging up the amateur career at 9-2 and two with two amateur championships, making his pro debut on that night, the Greek assassin George Simos out of Fuse MMA. And I'd like to start out by uh, welcoming you to the professional division, and uh, we'll start out by talking about your amateur career. It looks like you didn't have a whole lot of trouble preparing to become a professional. And I'd like to ask first off, what did you learn most from your amateur career and, and possibly what, what fight did you learn the most about yourself that you knew this was something you wanted for a career? Uh, I have to say the one fight that sticks to me is the Adler fight. It was pretty much taking my first loss and uh, really taught me, you know, in that fight I could have done a lot better. I think I didn't give it myself. Like, I didn't give my all in there. And uh, after I took that loss, I went back to the drawing boards and took on like a four fight winning streak, taking the TXC strap and then taking the WXC strap. And uh, yeah, that fight changed me for the better. And now, making your professional debut at WXC, what does that mean to you to do that for this organization? Uh, WXC has always been good to me. They've always uh, always had fighters, never had a problem. Always had my fights known early, you know, no last minute changes. And they've always put on like, a good show, I feel, so I'm glad to do it for them. And definitely put on a show for everyone over, the, over at WXC. And now with uh, the coaching staff at Fuse MMA, you know, co-owners Ben Lagman and Don Richard have really been putting together a solid team of competitors. And when you add 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Ann Arbor to that. You got a blue belt, you're getting close to purple status uh, in both, uh, you know, Kaique Jiu-Jitsu and then 10th Planet. What do you do for striking? For striking? Well, uh, I train with a lot with my 10th Planet coach, Adelaide Cleveland. Not a lot of people know him, he's still kind of like under the radar, but he's actually, I've been with him since I was 16 years old, training out of Martial Arts Unlimited with a guy named Chris Maljuri, who was also my original coach. And that's where I met Ben Lagman and all like Bo Harris, you know, and bringing guys like Darren Cruikshank, Vince Murdoch, Cody Stamen in there sometimes to spar. But anyways, yeah, I usually work my striking with Adelaide. You know, he's got ten different black belts. He's trains uh, at Kings MMA in California under Rafael Quadero with those guys. And usually I make trips out there to train with those guys. And he really shows off my striking a lot. You know, a lot of, not a lot of people know that, but yeah, he's the main reason for my striking. Well, one way to ensure that you're going to have to get good at striking is to become a black belt in jiu-jitsu, right? Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, when you fight another black belt, you guys are, are negating uh, styles and, and, you know, negating your strong points. So you see a lot of guys who are great on the ground spend five rounds on their feet. So that's a good thing to know uh, about that. And it's not the first time I've heard that about a black Cleveland. And, you always look forward to seeing him in somebody's corner. Now, your featherweight opponent here in your debut is going to be Dominique Carter from Scorpion Fighting Systems. Now, Scorpion Fighting Systems not quick to make a lot of friends with other gyms. 
Uh, it's no secret that Michigan Top Team, who widely regarded as somewhat of a sister school of Fuse MMA, at least up until this point, until there's money on the line, you guys are all pretty much good friends, as far as I can tell, correct? Yeah, I mean, I got no beef with anyone over there. Now, does the rivalry with SFS transcend in, in both camps? I mean, do you feel uh, a little extra challenge or, uh, you know, that you want get, to get, get a little more out of your opponent in this contest? Uh, not really, honestly. The, the main thing I focus on is just my opponent. So it doesn't even matter what camp you're from. I'm just focused on you and getting that win in highlight real fashion. Well, I'll tell you what, Dominique, Dominique Carter has done such uh, several times in his own amateur career. So what have you done in preparation for him since you do focus on your opponent? Just being aggressive. I feel like he doesn't like to take hits, and once he, he gets uh, overwhelmed, he uh, starts to fall apart. But lately that I've noticed in his fights is he has pretty good jujitsu, and he's going against people who don't have great jujitsu, so they start beating him up. But he'll catch him in like a guillotine or a triangle choke or a couple things like that. And I feel I have the better jujitsu to match that. And I don't feel like it's a bad matchup for him either way, in my opinion. Well, and then so anybody considering buying tickets for this event October 21st in Eastern Michigan University's Convocation Center in Ypsilanti, Michigan, why should they pay particular attention to your debut that night? Because I bring out the best fights. I, I throw, I'm not afraid to get hit. I'll definitely throw and stay in the pocket. But I also do so intelligently and I throw good jujitsu. I got all types of wins. I got TKOs, I got submission wins. And I'm just fun to watch, so. And do you have a message for your opponent before you guys step into the NWXC steal and let them lock the door? Hide your legs. <laughs>